Welcome to Melrose Unitarian Universalist Church. Our service this morning is called To Know and Be Known, Membership Sunday. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. All right, thank you, thank you. That was a little more energy, thank you. I am the Reverend Dr. Suzanne Intrilligator. My pronouns are she and her, and life is really good today, at least for me. I don't know, I, I love peak lilac season. Do you all love the lilacs? And they are just everywhere now, and I've got some in my kitchen, some in my living room, right outside the window. Oh, I love it. So please, if, treat your nose right. Don't, don't miss peak lilac season this year. And today is also a special day in, in my family because it is Horton Hears a Who Day. Do you know that? On the 15th of May, in the jungle of Newell, by the heat of the day, in the cool of the pool, he was splashing, enjoying the jungle's great joys when Horton the Elephant heard a small noise. It's a great book, and that's how it starts. So today is, uh, in my mind, it's Dr. Seuss Day, and Theodore Geisel was one of us. He was a UU, but we all loved him even before we knew that, I think, didn't we? Here in church, it is a very special day because it is Membership Sunday, when we celebrate new members and long-term members and just everybody who is bold enough to jump on board our life-changing mission. It's going to be a fun service today. We have lots of honors and gifts and fun things to give away. And before we can get started, I've just got a couple of quick announcements. As I am sure you are aware, COVID levels are back on the rise. So our safety team here at church had to make some changes this week. Uh, here to tell you about it is team captain Kathy Sang. I believe she is with us on Zoom. Kathy, are you there? I am here. I don't know if Bill's got me yet. Yeah. Oh, good. I can hear you. I don't see you quite yet, but I know Bill's working on it. Okay. Well, good morning. As you may have heard by now. Wait, one, one second, Kathy. I'm going to stop you because I guess I can't, I think Bill can't find you. Just give us one more second so we can see and hear you. Uh, Kathy's Kathy. iPad. Are you Kathy's yeah. iPad? Yeah. Reverend I, Suzanne, I, I pinned, I pinned Suzanne or I pinned Kathy. No, I see her. Okay. Good morning. As you may have heard by now, the safety task group made the difficult decision this past week to tighten the church safety protocols. And we felt this was the safest action for the, first, for the church to take in response to the current rise in COVID cases and transmission rates in our community. So for the time being, masks are again required to be worn by everyone in the building attending all church sponsored activities and meetings. And in addition, refreshments may not be served inside the building at church events right now. That means no coffee hour in parish hall with refreshments outside is fine. It also means the potluck lunch scheduled for today, unfortunately, could not be held as planned. And the safety team knows these decisions might not be popular with some church members and friends, but it is the safest alternative for the greater all of us right now. And hopefully conditions will improve in the coming weeks and we will be able to relax the protocols again. In the meantime, we appreciate your support in following these guidelines. Um, we had a hard time hearing your first couple sentences. Could you just give us the first two sentences again, please? As you may have heard by now, the safety task group made the difficult decision this past week to tighten the church safety protocols. We felt this was the safest action for the church to take in response to the current rise in COVID cases and transmission rates in our community. Thank you, thank you. So what that means is that we're wearing masks throughout the building again, and we're not eating inside. Um, so due to that, we're going to have coffee hour on the front lawn today. We'll have snacks and coffee and everything and a little tent. It should be lovely. Um, and also the potluck lunch that we had scheduled for today is getting rescheduled. It's postponed now, we think, till June 5th. We hope to be able to have it then. Um, this coming Tuesday, just a couple more announcements. This coming Tuesday at 7, please don't forget, is the annual meeting. It'll be here in the sanctuary and also on Zoom. 
and that is when we will approve the budget and our leaders for next year. Members, please try to be here and participate. Also, we are looking for an AV volunteer for that night. Bill can't be here, and we need somebody to serve as a backup. Bill would be happy to train somebody. Um, both Dan and I could do it, but we're supposed to be running the meeting, so we're looking for somebody else. Please step up and let me know if you're available. Next Sunday is another special occasion in the life of the church. It's our annual youth-led worship service starring your kids. Plus, we'll have our traditional bridging ceremony to celebrate Ellie Ferris, who grew up in this church and is becoming a young adult. And this is how we will bridge her to the next phase of her life and bless her along. So please be here to enjoy. Also, we'll have a cake to celebrate Ellie and our Opening Doors project people are sponsoring a luncheon on the lawn to say thank you for the concert. So next week, Ellie, cake, lunch, lawn, please be here. It will be a good Sunday. Then on May 29th, we'll have a guest minister to tackle a topic that may be new to some people here. It was requested by somebody here about body image and fat liberation. So that will be an interesting Sunday on May 29th. One more big announcement. The worship committee is now starting to organize our summer Sundays for this year. They want to keep us connected over the break via in-person activities on Sunday mornings. Um, could you lead a yoga class in the park or a nature walk or an art activity or a poetry sharing circle? Whatever you want to give, the worship committee wants to hear from you. I'd love to put together 10 or 12 meetings over the summer to keep the Keep us all feeling connected in community. So if you want to get involved, please email Eric Lambiasso. Now, let's get rolling with today's worship service. Folks here in the room, please remember that you can submit your joys and sorrows on paper if you like, or you can come forward to speak at the mic. Raise your hand now if you'd like the usher to bring you paper and pencil, and they can take care of that. Here to help us today are our ushers. Paper, please, over here to Florence, Mark. Our in-person ushers are Mark Viola and Michael O'Connor. Thank you both. Our Zoom chat host is Liz Folzer. Hi, Liz. Thank you. And Gail Maynard is hosting Coffee Hour today. Thank you, Gail. Thanks to everybody volunteering. And now, it is time for our weekly moment of greeting when we say hi to each other. So people in the room, turn around, wave to each other. We can wave to the folks on Zoom here. Hi, hi folks on Zoom. Oh, some of you are outside. Some of you are inside. You're looking good. Hi, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's really good to see you. Good morning, everybody. Are we cool enough in the room? Is it too hot in here? Can you feel the fans? Dan is always cool. All right. I call us to worship this morning with these words from the Reverend Kimberly Tomzak Carlson. It is not by chance that you arrived here today. You have been looking for something larger than yourself. Inside of you, there is a yearning, a calling, a hope for more, a desire for a place of belonging and caring. Through your struggles, someone nurtured you into being, instilling a belief in a shared purpose, a common yet precious resource that belongs to all of us when we share. And so you began seeking a beloved community, a people that does not put fences around love, a community that holds its arms open to possibility, a heart home to nourish your soul and share your gifts. And you have found it here. Welcome home, welcome to worship. During World War II, a small band of American Unitarians in Europe were helping Jews to escape the Holocaust, and as a secret symbol to connect refugees to safety, they developed this symbol which has become our flaming chalice. Here to light ours is Mark Viola, and here to give us a reading via Zoom is a newish member who this year stepped up to lead our nominating committee. It's Amy Cooper Ailes. Amy, are you here somewhere on Zoom? I'm here. All right, Amy, great. Okay. Hold on one second while we make your picture big. Let me know when you want me to read. Amy, go ahead. Yep. 
Go ahead. Okay. Invoking the Past, Present, and Future by Katie Romano Griffin. Come, let us enter this space of hope and community. Come, let us enter this space with our sorrows, our joys, our passion, and our compassion. Come, let us enter this space with the stories of our ancestors, for their strength and wisdom beats in our hearts. Come into the space present to the beloved companions who move beside us. Come into this space that together we are building a future for other generations. Come, come into this space and let us worship. hymn whoa okay <laughs> our opening hymn this morning is faith of the larger liberty it's 287 in your gray hymnal we also broadcast lyrics on our screen in the sanctuary and over zoom please rise in body or in spirit to lift our voices in song together Go back to your pews and everyone please remain standing and join me please in our covenant which is on the screen before you. I'll give the choir one more second. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humankind in fellowship to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. This is our great covenant, one with another and with our God.
please be seated. Let's see, where am I supposed to be standing? This looks good to me. Is this okay, Bill? Okay. As I said, today is Membership Sunday, and we are going to recognize some members today, people celebrating anniversaries of membership. First, I want to mention Seth and Laura Ettenberg, who have been members here now for 10 years. They couldn't join us this morning, but the next time you see them, please give them a high five and say congratulations on your 10 years. Now, I want to call forward four people who are celebrating an even bigger anniversary today. 25 years of membership in this congregation. And first we're going to give them each a gift, and then they're going to share some words with us from uh, the lectern over there. And that will be our story today, they're sharing. Are you ready? Okay, I want to call forward these four people celebrating 25 years of membership at Melrose UU. Nyla McCullough. Chuck Foley, Nancy Nichols, and Michael O'Connor. Just stand down here for a second. I want to give you all a present. For you are these lovely orchids. So now that you were first one up, you get to choose purple, pink, yellow, or white. Nancy and Michael, step forward. Chuck. I just have a few. Go ahead, Michael, you get one too. <laughs> so, you guys. So, I just wanted to say over the past 25 years, these four members have volunteered in so many different ways. And this is our moment to honor them and thank them for their commitment. Let's see, just off the top of my head president, vice president, registrar, finance chair, trustee. Come on over here, you guys. I want you to be on camera. Come closer to this table. This is what we had planned. Some, come stand over this way. Wave to the people at home. OK, thank you. Now, registrar, finance chair, trustee, founder of the community engagement team. What am I forgetting? People, shout it out. What have these people done for the church? Property. The fair, women's retreat. Search committee. Chili. Chili. They have pledged and volunteered and cooked and led RE and coordinated and supported and cared for everyone here. And so I invite all of us to thank them now. People on Zoom, I want you to, on the count of three, unmute people in the room. I just want to hear a really big hip hip hooray for these wonderful people. Ready? Hip hip hooray! <laughs> So I wanted to thank you very much. Now, all four of them said that they wanted to speak for a minute or two today, but we didn't decide on an order. So who, who wants? Nancy, go ahead. Up from the lectern, please, Nancy. Thank you. And, and you guys, I think maybe you just want to sit down in the front row. Thank you. All right. There you go. And you can take off your mask. One at a time, you can take off your mask. Make sure you're close up to that mic. Okay, somebody will tell me if they can't hear me, correct? Closer. Yes, no, yes. Closer. On Christmas Eve, 1994, we attended candlelight services at MUUC, and that was the beginning of a relationship that has endured and thrived for more than 27 years. We weren't looking for a church. Only a service to celebrate the holiday, sing carols, and see a nativity pageant. It did that and way more. In January, we returned for our regular service and became intrigued with the seven UU principles and impressed with the then minister, Reverend Phyllis O'Connell. We were encouraged to come into coffee hour by Alice Heald and other senior members of the church but we quickly headed out the front door because coffee hour? <laughs> uh, 
what do you do at coffee hour? In February, we bravely attended the church's service auction downstairs in the supper room and sat with Randall and John and thus began our connections with long-term church members. On Christmas Eve, 1996, we signed the membership book. Fast forward, and as I look around the sanctuary and on Zoom, I see individuals that I've welcomed at the front door of the church on their first visit. I see families in whose living rooms I have sat when we've had our first pledge conversation. I see volunteers that I've worked with for over 20 years at the Harvest Fair. I see faces that shared intimate and sometimes painful moments at covenant group sessions. All of these experiences have added to the richness of my life. Next to marrying my darling, darling? darling husband, joining MUUC has been one of the best decisions I've ever made. Bob Hope always said, never follow babies or Nancy Nichols. Um, as I reflect over the last 25 years, I, I remember feeling as if I had taken an oath when I signed the book, an oath that was for me a solemn promise, a promise to financially support and serve this congregation. While trying to fulfill that oath, I've been inspired by many of you and your stories. I have had the opportunity to be, to be part of meeting our challenges and enjoying our successes. I have made friends who have been there when I needed it. I have watched our youth grow to be really good people. I've also enjoyed getting to know Adam Lombiasso. I have been supported by this community in so many ways. As I stand here this morning, there's no doubt in my mind that I have received much more than I've given. Mostly what I want to say this morning is thank you. Thank you to this congregation for the past 25 years. I remember first coming here and saying at the end of the service, I don't feel any conflict. So <laughs> that was different. Holy is this place, Christmas Eve services, having our now 26-year-old daughter dedicated in this space by Phyllis O'Connell, looking at Mary Beth, while telling the story of the prodigal son in RE, sitting in a circle in Alan and Margaret Gromenstein's yard, <laughs> wrapping up a year of cello circles and everyone singing, may the long time sun shine upon you. At this church, I learned the Bible did not fall from the sky. I learned about Rumi, Thich Nhat Hanh, Elaine Pagels. At General Assembly, I learned we really did need to do the work to become a welcoming congregation singing Dona Nobis Pachem, laughing so hard at women's retreats, moving a sawhorse with a detour sign with Jane en route to the dining hall. I know the meaning of community because of this church. I've learned and grown and developed a spiritual life because of this church. And I've always felt proud to call Melrose Unitarian Universalist Church my church. Thank you. This seems like a good time to reflect on my church membership, as well as to recall the outset of it. At the time, I recall others trying to impress upon me perhaps what was a gravity I could not perceive in the moment. 
Still, they tried to help me avoid considering it as enormously momentous. They advised me it was a decision defined by each person for themselves, that some care and deliberation should be taken. So looking back, I know that I didn't do it just for the free wedding, since Jane had already qualified for that. Um, my recollection is that I had already covered the ground involved in my process. For me, church was a spiritual home, not the perfect spiritual home, rather one for which I was accepting the responsibility to make. Importantly, one where I fit. At this point, I just want to add a little bit about like, you know, those 20, the 25 years and say that I've done a ton of different things in this church. Um, and with maybe a few small exceptions, uh, the vast majority are things that I had no prior expertise or really knew anything about. So, um, you know, setting out to serve in those ways, I found ample opportunity here. Um, but anyway, uh, today seems also uh, like as good a time as any to consider uh, just those things. I have learned uh, three important concepts and questions to apply at this point or any time. Uh, one is gift, what do I bring to church? Two is calling, what brings me to church? And three is spiritual vocation, what do I do in church? And also, just before I forget, I want, out of all those things I've done, I want to give a shout out, it was mentioned earlier, to nominating and to express gratitude uh, to Amy for taking that on and just to, um, from, from, from my perspective, just to say how important uh, that process is and how actually uh, enriching and fulfilling it is to, to do it. So, uh, but anyway, uh, that's membership for me today. Thank you so much, Chuck, and thank you, Nyla. Thank you, Michael and Nancy. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> Don't forget a coffee hour out on the lawn afterward. You can give them a good handshake and say thank you for your 25 years of service. Each week we take a few minutes together for prayer and meditation, a time for each of us to center ourselves and connect with the holy, however it is we understand the holy. So let's start that time together this week by relaxing into our chairs, feeling our feet on the floor, letting our bodies settle. Let's breathe in and out together. In this meditation time, first we'll join in our centering song, and then we'll sit for a few minutes of shared silence. Then we'll speak to one another of our joys and sorrows. Then I will lead a prayer. Our worship theme for May is Nurturing Beauty. It's a month to notice the natural world around us, to appreciate and grow the beauty within us. Our centering song for the month is called Let Us See the Beauty. It is a two-layered chant. You can sing along with either layer or just listen and ease your way into our meditation time this morning. So song and then two minutes of silence. Let us see the beauty every day and source our lives its presence. Let us see the beauty every day and source our lives from its presence. Let us I see want the to beauty every day. Oh, oh, oh. 
Every Sunday we share with one another the joys and sorrows of our lives, the personal milestones of our journey apart and together. So I would like to invite people first, if you have a sorrow to share, people on Zoom, you can go ahead and tape it into the chat box. Mark is going to come forward with some that have been given on paper. If anyone else would like to come forward and share a sorrow from the microphone, I invite you to do so, so now and come stand by the fan. Um, you should have a microphone over there. Mark? There we go. Sorrow. Sorrow's, first. Sorrow's first, yeah. You can, yeah, there you go. This is a candle of love and support from Florence. Candle of love and support for my uncle Alan, who had, sorry, I'm foggy. Uh, for my uncle Alan, who had a severe reaction to his second COVID booster this week. Florence's uncle Alan had a severe reaction to his COVID booster. Um, there's uh, one here in the Zoom room from Doug and Ann, concerned for Doug's mother in South Dakota who is recovering from COVID, and for his aunt recovering from cancer surgery. Liz is the chat host. Liz, have I missed any other sorrows here in the Zoom room? I think you have them all, Suzanne. Thank you. No other sorrows in the room. Let us pause for a moment. Just hold these sorrows in our hearts and in our minds. Let's reach out to everyone in our lives who is hurting. Let's send some prayers and love this morning to the people of Buffalo, the people around the world who are hurting today. Let us send them our love and compassion. Let us remember to reach out to the people in our lives. And we light one candle for all the sorrows today that are spoken and unspoken. I want to ask if people have joys to share this morning. If you want to come forward and speak from the microphone, you're welcome to. People on Zoom, go ahead and type into the chat box, and I will read those. Mark, do we have any joys on paper? Come forward, Mary. I have a great joy today. My daughter, Melissa, is visiting. She was in the choir this morning. Hi, Melissa. So welcome. excited to have her. Welcome. Thank you, Mary. I think we have a couple of joys in the Zoom room. We had a lot of thank yous in the, in the Zoom room for the four people with their 25th anniversaries. Thank you to everyone. Ah, from Liz Folzer, Emma has finished her second year in law school and is off to an internship in Washington, D.C. From Rebecca Mooney, candle of joy that my daughters and I were able to travel to California last week to visit my mom and celebrate her 93rd birthday. And from Lisa W., a candle of joy for a tentative donation and transplant surgery date, June 16th. And we ask for prayers that nothing causes a delay to that date. That's for her husband, John, who is also a member of this congregation. Liz, did I miss any joys? You got them all. all right. Let's take a moment and hold these joys, too, in our hearts and in our minds. Remembering to reach out to the people in our lives and share our own joy. We thank you for sharing these. They reconnect us to one another and to all the blessings in our lives and all the joy of being alive. We light one candle to symbolize these joys and all our gratitude. Thank you, Mark. I think that dog wants to be part of our service. You may have a joy too to share. Ah, please join me in the spirit of prayer. For our prayer today, I offer these words from the Reverend Gretchen Haley. She's one of our ministers in Fort Collins, Colorado. Her prayer is called, for my children who keep asking why we have to go to church. Because there are not enough people telling you that you matter. 
not because you are funny or smart or send me the best YouTube videos. That you are loved even when you cannot get up on time or put your socks in, not beside the laundry basket. Even when your temper gets away from you, and before we know it, the whole family is crying. We are sitting here in this circle on this morning so that you hear someone else say, you are loved beyond belief. So that you feel from every direction, you belong beyond your choosing. There is nothing you can do that would make you unworthy of love. That your life is precious, each breath in and out precious. We are here to learn how to hold this much love at the center of our beings, to let it be our greeting and our parting, to let it flow from our singing and connect us in our silence. We are here to practice showing up like it counts, because we count. To show up with courage and also humility, to remember we could be wrong about everything, to feel a part of something with consequence beyond the everyday patterns, to learn community and responsibility, and to refuse despair, which, if you don't need it yet, you will someday to see people choosing kindness and letting go, giving away every blessing we receive with gratitude. We are here to learn and to love. Amen. Now is the time for our offertory. Our church is a self-supporting organization funded by your generous annual pledge. You may also contribute to our weekly collection plate, which we split every month with a deserving cause. Folks on Zoom can donate either way. Go to our homepage at melroseuu.org and click on the orange button in the top right corner. For May, our giving partner, chosen by our high school youth group, is Youth on Fire, a drop-in center for homeless and street-involved youth that's run out of the UU Church in Cambridge. For our offertory music this morning, our choir will share with us the Great American Standard, popularized by Louis Armstrong, which is also a powerful prayer of gratitude for all that we have. What a wonderful world. I see trees of green.
In place of the sermon this morning, I have a few more surprises for you. There's two more bouquets of flowers left and a gift. Ooh, that's a clue. Um, first, well, I'm going to say there's, I've given over the sermon time to a reflection from someone celebrating a really special anniversary of membership today. After that, we'll have some words from our outgoing president of the board. And then after that, we're actually inducting a new member this morning. So please stay tuned, folks at home. It's a big day. Let's move forward. Please, Dan, come forward. This is Dan Griscom, our outgoing president of the board of directors. Dan is going to help me honor somebody who's celebrating a big anniversary, a truly landmark anniversary. So go ahead, Dan. Good morning. Today we've... Uh... You might want to, you could take off your mask if you want. That's a good idea. Today we've celebrated 10 and 25 year veterans of our church, but we are also celebrating someone who has been a member for 50 years, Randall Gromenstein. Please, Randall, please come forward. Randall signed the membership book in 1972. Since then, Randall has been served us in so many ways, as a youth leader, as an RE teacher, as a high school advisor, and a steadfast member of the choir. She and I even served together on the search committee that called Reverend Suzanne four thank years you. ago. Thank you. So thank you, Randall, and we have a gift to mark this very special occasion. And also some flowers. <laughs> Oh, and they're drippy, just what you needed, something really drippy. You can leave, go ahead, leave them there. Yeah. yeah, please, go ahead. You can just pull it out all right off. <laughs> all right, it's booby-trapped. I'm sorry about that. I left my chainsaw at home, sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so me. I'm sorry. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. <laughs> and Bill, you can go ahead and put it on the projector if you want so everybody can see it. People on Zoom, unmute everybody. Let's hear it from Randall. Hey, Randall. Hey, 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 hey. Thank you, Randall. Thank you so much. And I'm going to set up Randall right here, and I'll give you some water. Yeah? Yes, I'm bringing you a mic. I promise. Come, come forward. Also, there's water right here if you need it, and I will oh, get good. out of your way if I can good. find my mask. I'll get a different one. So it's, it's been 50 years, it, in case you're wondering. I, I just had my 70th birthday. Um, it's been 50 years since I signed the membership book here at Melrose UU. I was 20, but I was already a UU. I knew that at an early age. So I thought I would tell you about growing up UU, which makes me a little unusual. If I add that I married a lifelong UU, I start sounding like a rare bird indeed. I do know of at least one other lifelong UU, namely Phyllis Blacklock. I thought you'd like to hear about why, after all these years, I'm still a UU. Here it is in a nutshell. I was lucky enough to find a faith big enough to encourage my questions, and I was guided by other people who came to conclusions similar to my own. My parents were raised in other faiths. My mother in the Methodist Church with a high school stint as a Christian scientist. My father was raised in a non-observant Jewish home in Manhattan except that his father suddenly went traditional on him when he turned 13 and insisted on a bar mitzvah ceremony with all the trappings. 
My parents met after World War II and were married by a Presbyterian minister in my Jewish grandmother's living room. I'm hoping perhaps that the photos of Alan and Margaret are showing on the screen. Not yet, okay, hopefully they're coming. Oh, sorry, I'm anticipating. After finishing college, my father went to work at MIT Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington. One day his boss said to him, young man, you would like my church, First Parish Unitarian in Needham. Be there next Sunday at 11. <laughs> Those were different days, I think. In this way, my father discovered Unitarianism, which appealed to him. Many people have remarked on the similarities between Unitarianism and Reform Judaism, so perhaps this is not a surprise. Let me pause, ah, uh, here's my cue. <laughs> Let me pause for a moment here to show you my parents, who were both members here for many years. Such a gift that there are people here who still remember my father as well as know my mother. My parents bought a house in Woburn and joined the Winchester Unitarian Church. I was in kindergarten, and I remember two things about the Winchester Church. During the service, there was a motion choir of adult women who wore loose robes and danced solemn liturgical dances. I also remember Betty LaSalle, who was the director of religious education. One day, we wrote our bad habits on little slips of paper, put them in a metal container, and burned them. If only it were that easy, Mrs. LaSalle said, to get rid of bad habits. And here's a photo of my brother and me from around that time. Oop, wrong. Okay. When I was nine, we bought a house in Stoneham and joined the Stoneham Unitarian Church. The church owned the house next door, which is where Sunday school classes were held. Similar arrangement here, except that we've taken the, the house down and incorporated it into the church. The Sunday school curriculum of the 1960s was based on books by Sophia Lyon Faz, including Jesus the Carpenter's Son, From Long Ago and Many Lands, and Church Across the Street. I learned all the biblical stories, and I recall Catherine Gerson, also a member in Stoneham at the time who later joined us in this church. I recall her painting a wall white and then inviting us children to help her paint a mural of the Egyptian army being drowned in the Red Sea <laughs> while, uh, while, uh, during the exodus from Egypt. In high school RE class, that is Sunday school class, my teacher was a geology professor at Boston University who promised us gemstones, semi-precious, uh, in exchange for learning well-known biblical passages. I brought home a gemstone and demonstrated my prowess. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. I didn't have to look that up. Unfortunately, my father, I still don't know why, was so displeased that, I, that he put an end to my participation in, at that moment. I wish I had asked him about this. About that time, 1968, we started attending the Melrose Unitarian Church. I loved both the high school RE classes and the youth group called the LRY, which included kids from both the Unitarian Church and our near neighbor, the Universalist Church. The two churches merged later in 1974, but for, year, for years before the merger, the LRY, which met at our church, included kids from both congregations. In LRY, our main activities were fundraising for our annual February ski trip. To the despair of Mrs. Howe, who thought we should be doing something more religiously significant. But this was the reason I learned to ski. We ran paper drives and collected cans and bottles. 
I loved it, and I loved the kids in the group. My senior year of high school was formative for me. Um, my father led the high school RE class, and I recall him describing classic ethics problems. Your spaceship has crashed on Mars, and there are 10 of you, but food for only five days. What will you do? Also, as secretary of the LRY, I was invited to attend church board meetings. I was thrilled. Um, <clears throat> we high school kids were respond. Uh, pardon me, and I, I, I loved this. Adults were inviting us to help run the church. It was Youth Sunday of my senior year of high school, and we high school kids were responsible for putting on the service in the sanctuary. Four of us performed Inagata De Vida for the congregation since our drummer decided that the song conveyed our message. I still don't know what that message was, <laughs> and neither could the congregation figure it out. But they listened respectfully and found positive things to say to us after them. <laughs> Bless them. In high school, I encountered the larger world of Unitarian Universalism when I attended youth conferences on Star Island. I still go to conferences on Star Island, which for me has always been like a trip to the big city, heady and exciting. Then I return to my small home community and digest what I have learned. In these youth conferences, we debated the big issues of the day, the war in Vietnam, racism, sexism. I was proud of the pioneering role taken by many UU congregations uh, in performing weddings for individuals of different re religious backgrounds at a time when the Catholic Church refused to do so. It was a taste of struggles yet to come. I went to Swarthmore College, a Quaker school with a meeting house on campus. And I've always felt that if I weren't a UU, I would be a Quaker. But I already knew I was a UU. I attended a church for several years in a, the nearby community of Media, Pennsylvania. And one Easter, I took the train into Philly to attend church. Since Google had not yet been invented, I walked several blocks from the train station looking at street signs. The street I was looking for actually had two churches on it. The first one had a signboard reading, he died for our sins. I kept walking. The next one sign said, they thought he rose from the dead. Bingo. <laughs> I was home from college when I signed the membership book here at church. After college, I came back to Boston and eventually met up again with someone I had known at our church in Sunday school and in LRY. John and I started dating and eventually we married right here in the sanctuary with the Reverend Addison Steves presiding. And twist my arm, here's the proof, because Reverend Suzanne begged me to share these today. Here are our wonderful wedding photos from 1980. We even held our reception in Parish Hall. Did you know you can seat 100 people in Parish Hall and still have room to dance? 104. <laughs> John and I bought our first house in Stoughton, and I joined First Parish Universalist. One day, the minister said to me, have you thought of joining the choir? When I asked him why, he said, you know all the words to the hymns. <laughs> because the UU world is a small one, I want to mention here that I met Donna Clifford in the Stoughton Church. 
Imagine my surprise when life brought us together again and she and her wife, Dorothy Emerson, joined our church in Melrose. When our daughter was a year old, John and I moved back to Stoneham. And here we are as a young family in the 1980s. My parents were active in this church then, but John and I didn't get involved right away until our four-year-old daughter and her best friend were found on their knees one day saying, please God, make me a mermaid. <laughs> it was the Disney movie was the influence. Um, suddenly mindful of my own childhood, I came back to church. And before I knew it, I was teaching RE. 10 years of RE, as well as serving on the RE committee, lay ahead. Our minister was the Reverend Phyllis O'Connell, and she told me something important. Not that I think I listened, but anyway, I remembered it. The world needs a lot of volunteer work, she told me, and each of us has only so much energy. So it's important to do whatever volunteer work feels right for you and say no to the rest. In other words, it's all right to say no. That's the part I'm not sure I've absorbed. But a few years later, Kathy Kellier asked me to co-lead the high school youth, and I've been doing it ever since. So in summary, unlike many people in our congregation, I didn't have to leave the nest to find a more accepting religious community. I didn't need to go elsewhere to find people I respect and admire pursuing their own religious path. The Church Across the Street curriculum taught me that all the major religions agree on the important principles of how human beings should live. I can therefore worship anywhere, or nowhere, or here. I choose here because it contains my religious history, a history embodied in two memories. The first is the words of the prophet Micah which were painted on the walls of the sanctuary of the Stoneham Unitarian Church. And what doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to, I'm sorry, and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. Much later in graduate school, I studied philosophy Aristotle asked what the end or purpose of human life is. Pondering this, I thought of the words of our covenant, which we said earlier this morning, in particular words that come to us from the universalist part of our religious heritage. Say it with me, to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, to serve humankind in fellowship to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. This is our great covenant, one with another and with our God. Thank you. our outgoing president, Dan Grisco. Dueling laptops. What makes this church run? Our members. You've all heard the trope of the church needing your time, talent, and treasure. And with the pledge wrapped up, you've all heard plenty of appeals for your treasure. Well, I'm here to talk about your time and talent. This church is far more than what you see in this room, and it takes a lot of work to keep it running. Sure, we have great staff, but they need our help to do this job. Katie Campbell can't run the religious education program without an RE pro uh, committee, not to mention all the teachers who teach in the classrooms and lead the Our Whole Lives pro program. 
Tara Treshner Kirsch can't run the music program without the choir and all the other musicians who step in to perform. Therese Kay can't run the office without the Information Technology Committee helping her update the website, manage our Google account, and design and tweak all the computer systems in the church. Tom O'Donnell keeps the building clean and running, but he needs a property committee to guide him and to do all the major projects required to keep our 85-year-old building happy. Bill Holt has run the AV system for every single service this year, but he needed help to design, build, and improve the system, and someday he will take time off and will need a volunteer to step in and run the service. And Reverend Suzanne can't create these services without a worship committee to give her guidance and feedback, ushers to welcome worshipers, and all the others who help her with her ministry. And then there's so much church work that needs to be done solely by our members. The board of the church manages the business aspects of the church. The finances of the church center on our treasurer and collector guided by our finance committee. Our trustees manage the endowment giving us freedom to make long-term planning decisions. Our nominating committee works every spring to find congregants to fill the slate of leadership positions. By the way, even with lots of existing vacancies and an exhausted congregation, they did an amazing job of shaking the tree this year. Bravo. Our safety team makes the hard decisions that keep us safe during this continuing pandemic. Our Green Sanctuary Committee holds us to the ideals of being good to the environment. Our membership committee helps visitors learn about the church and how it might fulfill their spiritual needs. The personnel committee helps us take care of our staff and finds new staff when we have vacancies. And last but not least, those setting up and serving at coffee hour, where we all enjoy goodies and where all the most important work of the church takes place. Then there's all the work that we do for the good of those outside the church the immigration ministry team supporting vulnerable refugees, the anti-racism team, which has spun off the wonderful Opening Doors program, the bread of life serving our neighbors healthy dinners, and Food First Sunday stocking up our neighbors' pantries. None of these would get done without the continuing time and talent of our members. So all you members, think about how you can contribute. What do you enjoy doing? What talents can you share with us? What part of the world of the church will you become part of? Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you so much. We are running a little bit late this morning, and so I'm trying to expedite things. But I do want to welcome a new member. It's a really exciting day. Um, I want to call forward, please. Jennifer, uh, who's going to help us introduce the new member, if you want to come up to the lectern. And, and while we get ready, um, I'd, I'd like to just call us for a moment into our history. For more than 170 years now, this congregation has gathered to care for one another, to ponder life's great mysteries, and to build a sense of community. As we prepare to welcome a new member, I want to pull together the cloud of witnesses all of the past members who have made this congregation what it is, its founders. So let's take a minute, please, to just name the names of the people who built this house. Hosea Ballou, J.W. Talbot, go ahead, please. Unmute if you like, type them in the chat box. People who welcomed you here. I'm, I'm, I'm mentioning historical figures, but members who welcomed you, please go ahead and, and, and call them here. Thank you. And now this is Jennifer Fanning, who joined herself in 2019, and now she's a member of our membership committee, and she is here to introduce our new member, Linda Ireland. Okay. Good morning. Today I have the honor of introducing uh, you all to Linda Ireland, who has been joining us via Zoom since January of this year. Linda lives in Melrose, and she is planning to come by coffee hour today to meet people in person outdoors. Right now, though, she's joining us by Zoom because she's preparing for a trip to visit her mother soon and wants to be extra COVID careful. 
Linda was born in Baltimore, Maryland, and at the age of four, she was living in Lincoln, Massachusetts, across from Drumlin Farm, where her interest in nature was first sparked. At 11, she moved from Maine to New Brunswick, Canada, where her mother still lives, a seven-hour drive from Melrose. Linda's degree in biochemistry from Dalhousie University was followed by three years of postdoctoral work in Scotland, but her path diverted from laboratory science after she returned to New England with her Welsh husband. Linda's husband answers to both Dave and Roy, but is just one person. <laughs> Linda's focus is now on conservation birding to protect habitat and sharing her connection to nature. She spends Sunday afternoons in a beautiful rock outcrop, oak and pine forest in Wakefield next to Breakheart Reservation. If you would like to see spring wildflowers among the moss and lichen-covered volcanic rock outcrops surrounded by knee-high black huckleberry and shaded by red, white, and scarlet oak, hickory, and white pine, I encourage you to join her, uh, join her walks on Sunday afternoons at 2 p.m. or Thursday afternoons at 3.30 p.m. at 100 Hemlock Road in Wakefield in the vocational school parking lot just past the gate at the entrance to the parking lot. I joined Linda for a walk in this area by Breakheart this past Friday. It was a beautiful area of old New England forest and native only plants and trees that I was unfamiliar with even after spending a lot of time at Breakheart. I learned a lot of really interesting things which I've been telling my husband about for the last two days. I hope you'll take the chance to join Linda for one of these walks. Please join me in welcoming Linda to MUUC and meeting her today or at an upcoming MUUC event. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. And now, Dan, I'm going to call you forward, and we're going to do the pledging to each other. All there's left to do is swear in Linda. She's already gotten her gifts and everything. I'll bring her the flowers and the chalice later today. There's somebody who needs muting, I think. OK. We're waiting for the congregational pledge to be put on the screen, and then we'll all say it together. Well, Dan will read it for us. Dan will yeah. lead us. There we go. So, with me. We, the members and friends of Melrose Unitarian Universalist Church, welcome you as a newly signed member of this congregation. Grateful that you have chosen to carry on the legacy of our free faith and compassionate spirit. We join hearts and hands and covenant with you, one to another, in this unending quest for wisdom, humility, and love. Beautiful, and now Linda has a response. Mindful of truth ever exceeding our knowledge, and of community ever exceeding our practice. Reverently, I covenant with you to share the strength of integrity, the heritage of the spirit, and the unending quest for wisdom, humility, and love. Yay. OK. Yay. Woo! Big and remember, Linda's coming to coffee hour, so you can welcome her and meet her and shake her hand in just a few minutes out front. As I said in today's call to worship, it is not by chance that you arrived here today. You have been looking for something larger than yourself, a place of belonging and caring, a heart home to nourish your soul and share your gifts, and you have found it. Congratulations to Linda, to Randall, to Nyla, to Chuck, to Nancy and Michael. And now let's wrap it up with a hymn that says it all. We're answering the call of love. Number 1014 in the Teal Hymnal.
If you would remain standing and join me in our chalice extinguishing words. We extinguish the flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Thank you. Our service is ended. I just want to remind everybody that coffee hour is on the front lawn. I think we haven't moved the food out yet, so keep your mask on, maybe grab some food and take it out to the front lawn, and then congratulate all these great people. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Happy Membership Sunday. <laughs>